Are there things you see happening in the world that are interesting to you in terms of the experience of dining in a restaurant? I remember when Jean Georges opened Jean Georges. My review talked about how he brought aroma in, and it was like a very conscious. Mm. It was a constantly opening up of you know soup pots and thing with the aroma coming up. And it was something you'd forgotten, and you got into that restaurant, and. You were aware from the moment you walked in that everything smelled good. Smell is the easiest sense to activate in the brain. It's the most primitive of our emotions and it's the thing that drives us and it's like memory. Um, you know, you, you smell something from your childhood yeah. and you're right there. Location really matters. You know, where you are totally changes what you're eating. And it's also never going to be the same again, right? I mean, you're very aware when you're there that you are having an experience that is not replicable, right? Whatever happens, it's this one night only. It's all about the prep and then it's about letting go, yeah. right? I mean, you can only do so much. I mean, you, you get everything ready and then, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's the same with theater, right? And so much of it is about what comes back from the audience. Um, and it's the same in a restaurant. You feel the impermanence even on a show that, that has installed itself. And there's something about that fleetingness. That's what makes theater going an experience, an event, and special. And it's also, I think, why theater is a have to be in the room experience. Right. Right. There is a, a communal urgency. And I wanted to create the same for everybody, even for the people who will tell me, well, okay. it's very chaotic, looks like a big chaos. I don't know if I like it. I'm like, eventually you're going to like it That's because so you want to be part of this. It's also interesting you started with very specific things like churros or really very individual things that are people's attraction to come in. Is the design responsive to how the audience uses it? It's never the perfect design in that sense, yeah. that you have to read the place, people have to become part of the place, and then you have to follow the people a little bit. Yeah. And I love to see how changes began happening to adapt to the the questions that you couldn't answer before you opened. But we didn't not... open a restaurant, we didn't open a market. What we opened was a party place. Yeah. And a party place that everybody can play a role. Right. You must remember, the audience does not see light unless it hits something. I'm adding another element to everything I do because I do know about magic, surprise. Uh, I really do know a lot of illusions through history, how they were accomplished, and some, many of them were based on light. It makes me think about the sort of magic of something that's so permanent, like Central Park, with something less permanent like the stage, and then this thing that appears and then disappears, um, the power of that temporary new look at something permanent. So, yeah, and, and the fun also was that the city became alive. Again, we didn't bookend it by having it at the end of the show because that, by that point, you only cared about Simon and Garfunkel. You didn't care about lighting. Yeah. So uh, they stayed up there until the end and they faded out.